Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. second Sunday of Lent, I ask you to please at this time make a private examination of your conscience. I confess to Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O God, I earnestly repent of all my wrongdoings and a part of the sorrow that I have offended you. Most merciful Father, have mercy on me, forgive me, and pardon me my sins. I resolve to amend my life improve and sanctify it, that I may become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I beseech you to bless Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to praise the Lord our God for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and the remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and by his authority vested in me, I absolve you of your sins, in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Take away from us our iniquities we beseech you, O Lord, that pure hearts may enter into the tabernacle of the Holy of Holies, through Christ our Lord. Amen. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Save the Lord, I refuse you, my Lord, my God, and my trust. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And to us, and shall be, Lord, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty. 
Almighty God, our Father, you revealed the glory of your Son and admonished us to hear his word. Help us to draw together in faith and love and to then proclaim him as our Lord and Savior. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The lesson prescribed for the church for this morning's Holy Mass is taken from St. Paul's Epistle to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many lives live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation so that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way. Here ends the lesson prescribed to the church for this morning's Holy Mass. Thank you, God. Good and upright is the Lord, who shows sinners the way. Come, says my heart, seek God's face. Your face, Lord, do I see. Do not hide your face from me, do not rebel your servant in Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory be to thee, o Lord. About, the, about eight days after Jesus had said this, he took Peter, John, and James and went up a mountain to pray. And while he was praying, his face changed in appearance and his clothing became dazzlingly white. And behold, two men were conversing with him Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing there with Jesus. And as they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. And while he was still speaking, a cloud came over and cast a shadow upon them all, and they became frightened when they entered into the cloud. And then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. And after the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not know at that time what to tell him to anyone. By the words of this holy gospel, may our <coughs> sins be forgiven. Thus conduct themselves according to the model that you have in us. 
And this selection is taken from this morning's lesson from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may have heard this joke before. It was sent to me by Irene Morrissey. But if not, a cowboy who just moved to Wyoming from Texas walks into a bar and orders three mugs of beer. He sits in the back of the room drinking a sip out of each one in turn. When he finishes them, he comes back to the bar and orders three more beers. The bartender approaches and tells the cowboy, you know, a mug goes flat after I draw it. It would taste a lot better if you bought one at a time. The cowboy replies, well, you see, I have two brothers. One's an airborne ranger, one's a Navy SEAL, and both are serving overseas somewhere. When we all left our home in Texas, we promised that we'd drink this way to remember the days when we could drink together. So I'm drinking one beer for each of my brothers, and then one for myself. The bartender admits that this is a nice custom, and he just leaves it at that. The cowboy becomes a regular in the bar and always drinks the same way, three beers at a time. He orders his three mugs and drinks them one in turn. But one day he comes in and only orders two mugs, though. All of the regulars at the bar fall silent. When he comes back to the bar for the second round, the bartender says, I don't want to intrude on your grief, but I want to offer my condolences to you. And the cowboy looks a little bit quizzical for a moment, then a light dawns in his eyes, and then he laughs. He says, oh, no, 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 everybody's fine. It's just that my wife and I, we joined the Baptist church, and I had to quit drinking, but not my two brothers. <laughs> so that's from Irene Morrison. Today, the church directs us to think about the transfiguration. Not only Jesus is the transfiguration, and that's why the church also asks that we read from Paul. He tells us that these mortal bodies that we have, that these bodies, these very bodies that are sitting right here now, will be transformed into the glorified or glorious bodies of heaven. And we also will experience the transfiguration, in other words. All of those things that we heard in the gospel about Jesus, that lies in state for us because we believe that this is not all that there is. We need to remember this promise because too many people in our world act like this is all that there is. But we're supposed to be people of faith. We're supposed to believe that we are body and soul. We're supposed to hope that someday these mortal bodies of ours, these bodies that catch cold in the winter when it's zero one day and 50 degrees the next day, you don't know how to leave your house, that break down, that wear down, they get tired, they get hungry, that someday these very bodies that are, we are dwelling in now, that we think this is all that we are so often, these are going to be transfigured into the bodies that know none of these limitations. And this is why we need to take the promise of the transfiguration seriously, which is the opposite of the Baptist cowboy story I started with this morning. He's a Baptist who disavows alcohol because of his religious choice, but he still drinks anyway for his two brothers who aren't Baptists. There are all kinds of creative ways to get around taking the faith seriously, and I've heard a ton of them. But are we really fooling anybody? Are we really even fooling ourselves? Lent, for example, is the perfect chance to live faith more deliberately. During Lent, we are constantly reminded of the promise that we are going to be transfigured. Now, you may not go, but the church invites you to worship not only on these seven weeks of Lent on Sundays, but on Wednesdays and Fridays as well. And the reminder of our spiritual selves is not locked into this building, even if it is Sunday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I want to mention that again, Wednesdays and Fridays as well. It's not just locked here. During Lent, we are also supposed to fast on at least Fridays. And if you are healthy, and I imagine that all of us here are healthy enough to do this, we should not be eating meat on Fridays. Our Friday meals should be relatively simple. And then for those who want to do a little bit extra, because there are some that keep the Friday fast all year, there's Wednesdays as well. And so by that practice, this forces us to think about why we have to change our menus. And that hopefully then reminds us about the passion and the death of Jesus, and that our little tiny Friday sacrifice of not having a steak, but instead having a tuna fish sandwich, which still fills our bodies, that maybe that can remind us even at home of the greater sacrifice of Good Friday. And maybe we gave up something for Lent. Maybe we added something to our Lenten practice. Again, all of this comes together to remind us that we are body and soul, and that we are promised our own transfiguration, that this life is more than just the obvious. And sometimes I think we forget 
We are body and soul. So back to the Bible story of the transfiguration. Peter, James, and John are up on that mountain. They're up there with Jesus. And they're not expecting to witness anything as grand as the transfiguration. I think they're expecting to go up that mountain and be with Jesus while he prays. Jesus takes off to be at prayer several occasions in the Gospels, so it's nothing out of the ordinary. And on the night before he dies, Jesus takes his disciples with him as he goes off to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. So if this is the custom of Jesus going off in prayer, Jesus taking the disciples with him, then these three disciples, they've only been expecting the same when they climbed that mountain with Jesus. And sad to say, but just like in the Garden of Gethsemane, the disciples give in to their exhaustion, and as Jesus is up there, they begin to fall asleep because of their exhaustion. The transfiguration occurs, and it says that Peter, James, and John, they're either asleep or half asleep. And Jesus' appearance is transformed from the earthly into the heavenly, and Moses and Elijah appear because in the Gospel, or in the Old Testament, neither one of them actually has a physical death. Moses walks off into the wilderness. Elijah is carried up into heaven in a fiery chariot. So since they never really die, they can appear again with Jesus in these stories. They converse with Jesus because his passion is right around the corner. The light and the sounds of this heavenly event, they awaken the disciples and they're still groggy. They still have, you know, rubbing their eyes to see what's going on and who knows what they've already missed. And then they hear God's voice declare from the cloud that they are now in the middle of and it says, this is my son, my beloved, listen to him. And they come back down the mountain after witnessing the transfiguration, after seeing Jesus as not just the mortal body, but the heavenly body that is what we also have, and they tell no one. In this account, Jesus doesn't command their silence. They say nothing because they don't know what or how to say anything about what they've seen. They don't really know how to process the transfiguration. They've experienced, they've experienced it completely other, and they have no way of understanding it, and they definitely have no way of sharing it. Now, you've probably heard accounts of veterans who've come back from war, and they simply cannot share their stories with civilians who have no idea what war is all about. They've experienced such otherness that they can't even begin to figure out a way to tell a person like me what it is to see a friend die or to have to kill somebody else. I know it's not the perfect analogy, but Peter, James, and John, they are in a similar state. They don't even know how to begin to share what they've experienced as they're coming down the mountain from the transfiguration. They have to wait until others experience the resurrection before they can say what happened to Jesus. And this is where Paul's words become so important. As people of faith, we have the buffer of other people of faith. That's why it's so important that we are a community and not isolated people of faith. We can observe what the promise of the transfiguration means in the lives of others, and we can draw upon that example, and then our example in turn is out there for someone else to see. And with that said, I want to just make this a little bit personal. I want to talk about Mildred Berlin woman who would sit right down here in the front so often, a woman who, as her body kind of slowly got a little bit weaker, I would even just go from here to there to bring her to communion because she couldn't even make it from there to the, to the communion rail, but a woman who up until I think even in January was still downstairs making pierogi with us, a woman who right up until the end was active and alert. She lived 97 years. And I went and I anointed her at, at a Bay State Medical Center earlier this past, or later, it was Thursday I think this past week, and I'll tell you, there are some deaths that are just a blessing from God. She lived to be 97 years old. And that woman was in that room, surrounded by her family. She was completely alert. And the reason I bring up her story now is we're talking about the transfiguration and that idea that we can be buffers so that we can understand through other people's examples what a faith life means. She died so peacefully. She died with so much faith, and she died with all of that love surrounding her and her giving it off to everybody else. You know, she told me that when she was dying, and she told everybody else there, that this is just a part of life. There was no fear of death. There was no anxiety. She said that she was going to go meet Ronick, her husband. You know, she was just, I think, more worried about all of us than she was about her passing. When I kissed her on the forehead as I was saying goodbye, I said, Mildred, I'll never forget you. And Mildred, the way Mildred says back to me, she says, why would you, Father? <laughs> you know, and that kind of idea of a person who has such a strong faith that she realizes that when she closes her eyes in this world, she opens them up in the next, 
That gives you such a power to live this life. Not just you know, to walk into heaven and say wonderful things about that, but it gives you a power to live this life, this life transfigured. And that's what I think the message of the transfiguration is. We are so much more than this. And when we live life with the knowledge that we are so much more than this, that changes the way we live. That changes the way we act. That changes our hope. That changes our expectations. That changes the way we treat other people. And that becomes the buffer that helps other people understand Jesus' transfiguration. Sometimes Jesus, you know, off on a mountain floating up in the sky with Moses and Elijah, that doesn't mean anything. But when we become the buffer, when we understand that transfiguration and we become transfigured, we help other people understand what the full potential of life is. The blessing of this life is that we are only a small part of everlasting life. When you live like that, it's not only a promise in heaven, it's a promise of a better life here and now. So may we be the transfigured people, just like Mildred was. The lesson that she gave me of what of passing from this world to the next means when you are a saintly person, that peace, that confidence, that love. May we also be that kind of a person to everyone else around us, so that our transfigured lives may help other people to understand the transfiguration and the death of a God who loves us as much as his cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Lord, as we continue our Lenten journey towards the cross and your unbelievable sacrifice for us, we also offer our prayers in memory of Fred Ferrick, who passed away on February 20th of 1999. This is offered by his daughter, Teresa Belisle. We offer an intention for the soul of Mildred Rulicki, and this prayer is being offered from her a &S sisters and also the Pierogi Gang for so many years where she helped us to work. We also offer our prayers at this time for the following who are all battling cancer. Doug Robinson by daughter Jenny Whitman and Karen Herzig. Tom Nidal by Teresa Belisle. Meg Connors by Ellen and Don Skrosky. Marie Lovin and Carl Dickinson by Joe and Peg Pustra, Randy Clement by her grandmother, Dottie Baronis, and also fathers Ray Dreda, Jan Vilcek, and Maurice Lizell is offered by myself. We also offer prayers for Frank Skrosky, Don Skrosky's twin brother, who has a rare neurological disease, and our prayers for him are offered by the Skrosky, Gates, Kirkendall family. And at this time, if there are any other prayers from the congregation, you are more than welcome to offer them. All set? For all of these prayers, Lord, and for all the private prayers that we bring before your altar, we ask you also to bless each and every one of us here gathered, and all of those who are traveling today at the end of school vacation week, we ask that they have a safe journey. And we ask you, Lord, to bless all those who are perish who are unable to be with us here today and those who are perish who have chosen not to be with us here today. And for these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
Father. Through him all things were made. For us, our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was the born of the Virgin Mary, and he came to him. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in these words. sacramental bread in the same faith and trust between the apostles and disciples of your Son and our Savior. And he said to them, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. sacrifice which Jesus has made. May we who share in these gifts of the Mass be filled with your peace and your love. We ask this through the same, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. Throughout all ages of ages, We do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through our fasting, you increase divine life within us. You preserve us from sin and lead us unto eternal life. Through our abstinence, you confirm us in goodness. As we commemorate this 40-day fast of your Son, may we together with him give you glory. Therefore, the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, 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 Lord God of us, to heaven and the earth and the Lord, and to be of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We therefore, most merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, most humbly beseech you to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy unspotted sacrifices, which your holy church receives from you, imploring you to defend and guide them throughout the world, together with your priests and all true believers of the holy faith. Remember, O oh Lord, and your servants and your handmaids. of all present in this congregation, imbued with faith in your holy care, your rule, and fatherly love. Wholeheartedly this day, we unite in spirit with all of those, we give the most blessed Mary, mother of Jesus Christ, likewise as apostles and with all the innumerable hosts of martyrs and confessors who lived, labored, and suffered for the same holy cause which Jesus Christ sacrificed his life and his most precious blood. Just as they believe, professed, and united with you, through prayer and this immaculate oblation, which you have instituted from the beginning of the world and in time have fulfilled through Jesus Christ and gave it to humanity as a pledge of eternal salvation. So we too this day profess and unite ourselves with you, most gracious Father, in humbleness of spirit and accept from your hands this holy bread and this precious chalice as a longed for gift bestowed on us by the Savior of the world as spiritual food and drink. You promised us this food and drink in that moment when he revealed his divine power by the multiplication of bread and feeding with it a hungry multitude of people. And afterwards we're told that giving it to his disciples and friends as a more excellent nourishment when he said, It is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And afterwards, when the temporal and messianic life of the divine teacher and giver of the covenant was drawing to a close, he gathered into the upper room all those he had loved in a singular way and had chosen to continue his work of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. In the world you will face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask whatever you wish, it will be done for you. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. For their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. After these and other words of the Archpriest's prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and eat of this, for this is my body. In like manner after supper, taking also this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and drink of this, for this is the chalice of my blood of the new and eternal testament, the mystery of faith, which for you and for many shall be shed for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you shall do these things, do them in remembrance of me.
Wherefore, mindful, Lord, we, your servants, as also your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, is also his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we receive from your own gifts and presents a pure offering, a holy offering, and a macro offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of eternal salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance, as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith, they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly beseech you, Almighty God, command that our prayers be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar before the countenance of your divine majesty. That as many of us as receive this altar of the most sacred body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be mindful also, Lord, of your servants and handmaidens, all who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and who have passed on to eternity. To these souls, O Lord, is also to those who have died in Christ, grant everlasting life, and to those who are in life straight in the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully shorten their sufferings and beseech you in the name of Christ our Lord and your beloved Son. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles, martyrs, and all your saints, who shed their blood for your name's sake, whose hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and whose lives patterned after the divine Master merited eternal bliss. Number us, O Lord, in their company, with confidence we ask you, not because of our merits, but that you bestow forgiveness through Christ our Lord, by whom, O Lord, these gifts you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and bestow upon us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, and to you, God, the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and all glory. Throughout all ages of ages, let us pray, admonished by salutary precepts, and following divine institution, we make bold to say, serenity of spirit, which you bestowed on the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed apostles, martyrs, and all of those who resolutely marched under the banner of our Savior, that being supported by your help, may always be free from sin and secure from all despair. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God. Throughout all ages of ages, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. May the union of your divine spirit with humanity in Jesus Christ be to our sanctification and light everlasting. Amen.
Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, My peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity according to your will, who lives and reigns, God, world without end. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who according to the will of the Father, through the cooperation of the Holy Spirit, has by your death revived the world, deliver me by this your most sacred body and blood from all my iniquities and from every evil, and grant that I may always fulfill your holy will, who lives and reigns for all ages. Amen. Partaking of your body, O Lord Jesus Christ, which I, all unworthy, dare to receive, may not serve as a judgment, but through your mercy may become a defense of my soul and body and a desired remedy. May this sacramental union with you, Jesus Christ, my Master and Savior, awaken in me living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. May it make me a willing and zealous servant toward fulfilling God's purpose on earth. And may it at last unite me tightly with you, O Christ and God, in eternity. Grant this who lives reigns of God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces that he has rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The peace of the blessing. God the Father, the Spirit, and the Son, the Lord, the Lord, the Body, the Blood of Christ, the Body, and the Blood of Christ, the Body, and the Blood of Christ, the Body, and the Blood of Christ, the Peace, the Blessing, the God, the Father, the Spirit, and the Son, the Lord, the Lord, the Peace, the Blessing, the God, the Father, the Spirit, and the Son, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, Body and the blood of 
This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. <coughs> the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord our God, you have refreshed us with these holy mysteries of the Mass. Give us the grace to always serve you faithfully, that we may at last find ourselves in your glorified presence. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. of our worship be pleasing to you, O Holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered up in the sight of your majesty be acceptable unto you, and through your mercy be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come to being in Him was light, and the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through Him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or the will of flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived among us, we have seen his glory. The glory is of the Father's only Son, full of grace and of truth. Thanks be to God.